we're back here at the uh, shop and we're going to continue with uh, the EVA foam or EVA foam, whichever one you want to call it. For some of you guys who do not know what EVA or EVA foam is, basically EVA is a mat that you can buy at Home Depot, Walmart, anything. It's a stand mat. You can see they even got where well, they got interlocking pieces and all that. You can get them in a half inch or quarter inch. Um, you can get them in either a two by two square or you can get them into like some big rolls or something like that. You also have some nice texture on the backs of these. You can also get EVA foam from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. You can get them in a five millimeter sheets. They have some good density to them. You can even get them in a smaller sheet than this just for those added details. When working with EVA foam, there are a lot of tools that you're going to need in the process of making a costume or a piece, a gun, a knife, any prop. Uh, the, the amounts of stuff that you can do with EVA foam is unlimited. Uh, you can definitely go on Google. There's people that are doing it 10 times better than me. This is my first big project on uh, EVA foam. Um, which I did a character called Krygor uh, for he's one of the uh, big icon characters and promotional characters for the new haunted house that me, Melissa, and James are putting on together called the Dead Zone. The first tools that I must tell you you need are blades. You have several different blades. I use this one, this one right here, I use a bunch. However, the tips dull down pretty quick. So, I have a sharpener. I don't know where it is. I've lost it. Um, but I definitely got backups. I go through these a lot. Um, you, have, you have that. You can have an extended one. That way you can get through some really thick, thick foam if you wanted to. Or let's say you got a piece here that's already on the project and you don't like it or it's not fitting well and you want to cut a piece off. That's where this would come in. Then you've got your small pieces. I got what's an exacto set. First thing you want to do when, when doing anything on this is you want to draw it out. You want to draw it out on the paper. You want to, you know, any kind of character, any kind of prop, you definitely want to Google search, Pinterest, anything like that. Then once you get it down, you need to draw it out on a piece of paper, figure out what you want. Then when doing this, you want to go ahead and take your paper here that you have, roll it out on the, on the table, and you need to cut you some patterns out. This is crucial. This is why you don't waste foam. Here you go. Here's an example of what we did here. Um, I had Melissa do the shoulder piece for me when she came over one Sunday. That's the pattern for it. So after you've gotten your pattern done, cut out, put it on a piece of EVA foam, cut that out, cut several different pieces out, you need to somehow put them together. And to do this quickly and to keep working, there's not much wait time in this, but it is barge. It's an all-purpose cement that you can get at any leather store or Amazon. Now, if you have Amazon Prime, Amazon's the way to go. This is where I get it. I get the quartz. You can get it by the gallon. But I like... It comes with its own little brush. However, you can make your own container with the gallons, and you can buy many of these types of brushes. The reason why I like barge is the fact that I put this on. It takes between five minutes to dry and then you stick those pieces together and they're on there. They're not coming back off. This, you don't have to wait. Once you stick these things together, you can keep working. You can keep going. That's why I am not a patient person. So this stuff is awesome. So after you get all everything glued together and get your piece, like we'll just take this piece right here. You get this piece done, all right? What you wanna do is we want to detail it now. So in detailing this, you're gonna need several tools. I have several different 
Dremels that I use that you can use to round stuff off. You can even make little rivet holes. You can do lots of stuff with all the attachments that you have with your Dremel set. Uh, to do any kind of detailing like uh, gouges or just lines, anything, you can of course use your hot wire foam factory kit that you might already have. Or if you do not have this, I like that because it, it burns enough but not too much. Uh, if you really have got to go in and have got to just go at big slashes and stuff like that, and of course if you're impatient like I am, uh, Arbor Freight welding soldering iron works awesome. By the way, with the heat gun that I didn't go into is if you want things round, if you want them bent in a way, if you want these things to curve, take the heat gun, heat it up, then put it into a bowl or around your knee, get that nice bend to it. Because once it becomes, once these things start cooling down, they will stay in that bent position. But to furthermore, same with other foam, you make little slices into your foam, you can heat them up and they'll spread and they'll look like a nice scar. Now of course, to smooth anything out, to round any of the edges, to do anything like that, Arbor Freight, I think, Home Depot and Lowe's almost had the same thing for about the same price, which is kind of odd because Arbor Freight is usually awesome about their prices. However, this is a must have. I love this thing. I get things done so much quicker with this instead of having to hand sand everything. So, this is perfect. But, this is not what you have to have if you want regular sandpaper. That's fine, especially doing a small project. Doing a bigger project, I would suggest this. Um, after you get done detailing everything and everything's ready to go, you want to seal everything. And you can do it two different ways. One is spray, you know, spraying it with liquid latex with an airbrush. However, I can tell you, latex and airbrushes do not mix well together. Not at all. I use plastic dip. Plastic dip works awesome. After that, you're going to need to either primer it or spray paint it. You need to definitely spray paint it one color, the whole thing, that way it's already done. And the reason why I say this is you need something on there that bonds to plastic. You need a spray paint that bonds to plastic, which you, there's several of them, but Painter's Touch, uh, Rust-Oleum, uh, and then of course uh, the Krylon Cover Max. Those two uh, I use, I either use the black or I use a, a, a primer and I cover the whole thing. That way you can go in there and do your detailing if you wanted to with acrylic paint. So after you get everything detailed, after you get everything painted, then you want to go in with some clear coat to keep that thing from rubbing off. Um, you've got gloss or you've got Mod Podge, which I like the most, which is a uh, matte finish. I mean, that is pretty much the tools that you need. Um, hopefully, I did not miss anything. I think. However, we got a belt to work on. 